This is what we are going to model and texture. We'll model in Blender, we'll texture in Substance Painter. Should be able to do it all in this video. It's a very simple modeling, but looks really nice. All right, so that's what we're going for. And this is the reference image. I'll provide a link for that for you. All right, so you bring in the reference image and pull it back a little ways so that you can look in the front and you can model. And then just move it so that your 3D cursor is somewhere down in the middle. And let's do this. Now it's gonna, it's gonna be. Let's say if we go for 24 vertices, I'm not. I won't put a subdivision on, but it's still gonna end up at around 12,000 uh, verts. So it's, it's not gonna be low poly for, for a spark plug. But I mean, you certainly could make it more low poly, and it would look look good. Maybe I'll try that. We'll see. But anyways, I'm just gonna mess around with this here and do it. It's not gonna look exactly the same, but we'll do what we can. So I'm just extruding up to there. I'm gonna hit E and I'm gonna come out to here about and just extrude that up. We'll bevel that off later. So we've got that. And I think I'll just keep going with the same piece uh, and we'll we'll see if we can you know, line up to the diagram as best we can. As you can see, that's not really quite on, so we're just going to do our own kind of thing here. I'm going to extrude up and we'll scale out. And what I'm going to do for these parts, let me just zoom out and think about this. Um, I think, okay, here's what I'm going to think I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to extrude all the way up the, uh, the proximate diameter of this thing. And we'll come up to here. And no, you know what? We're going to go all the way through. We'll go all the way through there and then we'll hit E to extrude and we'll come up and we'll just bring it out and we'll we'll continue with this piece in, in just a minute. Um, so I've got an edge loop there. I've got an edge loop there and that will delineate where I'm gonna put some new edge loops. So now I'm just going to go Control R and I'm gonna roll up a bunch of times. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna hit two. I'm gonna roll up a bunch of times and just create some of these things like that. And then I'm going to control B. So they're not all going to be in the right place. So I'm going to do that. Make them relatively tight. Get out of here. And then we'll go E and Alt S and push. And push them out to roughly the, the distance on the outside. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put one edge loop in each of these spaces. And we'll sharpen it up with that. So as you can see, it's it's already getting sort of mid polyish with this stuff. I'm gonna go back into solid view. It's a little easier to tell what I'm doing here and select the right one. So I just want this middle one here. All right, and I'm gonna scale them, but not in the Z. So I'm gonna press S, Shift, Z pull them out and sort of sharpen them like that. All right, I can shade smooth. And I'm gonna come in and Alt N recalculate outside just to make sure it's facing out. And we'll get that thing there. All right, let's come back down here now and bevel this off a bit. Control B and I'll put in, you know, a couple of segments. Three was probably okay for that. So maybe I'll switch to three for this one. Just uh, two, three. And I'm going to drag an edge loop in here. And I'm going to bevel this. And this is kind of sharp, so I'll just keep it tight like that. Bring an edge loop in there. And probably bevel this as well. No, maybe I'll just bring an edge loop up. Let's see what it looks like. Get some nice sharp edges. It'll look good in Substance, substance Painter. So let's get rid of that. And we've got the first little section done. All right, so we'll just carry on. So we'll come in here and I, in edge selection, shift alt and click there. I'm gonna go back into wireframe and one for ver vertex. It's just easier for me. All right, I'm gonna press E and S, scale it out. E, come up to here. E, come up to here, scale it in like that or so. I come up straight a little bit and then I'm gonna come out I'll come out straight to there I'll 
extrude this in a minute and then come up straight again. So we'll go ahead and we'll make that part. Oh, we'll delete. Come back into solid. Read for face selection. Shift Alt to click there. E and Alt S. And I'll push that out like that. And then I will just come in and I will bevel. I'll grab that edge and that edge. And just look down and control B, pull. I think I'm just going to have, yeah, I will have three. There will be somewhat rounded. That's good enough. Okay, but let's let's work on this now. Let's grab that and control B. We'll have two, three segments there. And the same thing on this one. Three, keeping it relatively sharp. Drag an edge loop down here. We'll, we'll, we'll need another one. Um, where? Maybe just there. Leave it like that. That's pretty sharp. I don't always go for, for uh, things that are too sharp, even when they're sort of supposed to be. Um, so I'm going to take that and scale it in a little bit. I'll take this and just pull it up a little bit. And just, yeah, all right. Okay, so we're up at the hexagonal bolt, so we're going to have to do something different. Um, I may bring that in like that, and we'll see if I wanted to do that or not. I'm going to select there, though, and bring my 3D cursor there and look from the front. Okay, so time for the hexagonal bolt. So bring in a circle, and we're going to make this 6. And go to edit mode, like that, edit mode scale it down and I'm going to bring it to right there close enough extrude up to there and then I'm going to take uh, this end E I'll bring it down but I'll scale it in and I think I'll come down one like that I better scale it uh, let's uh, go into wireframe so get that one control plus I'll go back to solid and I'm going to scale shift Z and just pull it under. We're, we're going to deal with that in a bit. Uh, and for the top, we'll grab this and we'll E to extrude. And I think I'll just come up to here and scale it in like that. And then we'll E and S will come in like that. I'm going to be making those circular. I think some stuff's flipped, so we'll do that. Let's just focus on that alone. Yeah, I don't like that exactly, so I'm going to come out and we'll we'll sort it out in a bit. All right, so I'm going to select these edges going around. And I'm going to bevel those, control B. I'm going to pull and I'll just use three. Make it nice and round though. And uh, I'm going to grab these ones, uh, those ones, but I won't make it quite as wide, so it's a little bit sharper. Okay, so far so good. Uh, go back in. I'm going to go to uh, one, and uh, I'm going to drop another edge loop in the middle of each of these. Yeah. Okay, so that those are there. I'm going to grab all of the the uh what's that six no nine uh, the nine ones all around here without getting anything else and we're going to move these so that we get that rounded shape to this hexagonal bolt i often don't do the rounded part because i'm trying to keep maybe sometimes keep the polys down and sometimes i don't feel i really need to uh i just forget how it goes so i'm going to uh bring everything back I just want to have a look at this. So these sort of pinch in. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So let's just scale in the Z, pinch them in a bit. And then the reason I put these in here was so that I could bevel, so that we get a slightly more rounded uh, uh, shape to that. So we'll grab all of these, and we'll just control B, just three. And I'll do that, and you know we get an okay shape so far. Now, the next thing is this, we're going to make that into a circle. So I'm going to use loop tools, circle. I'm going to look down from the top and actually that's looking fine. And I might make that a circle as well. Let's try that as a circle. Yeah, I think that's going to be um, better. I may drag an edge loop up, whether I make that a circle or not, we'll see. Let's just focus on that again and come down to this. Let's make this one a circle. 
so loop tool circle from the bottom sometimes it twists them and that's 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 looking fine uh, we'll try this one as well as a circle yeah okay and let's see how it's going to join I mean that's all right as it is good okay with that done um, the 3d cursors right there I need a circle from somebody please take a circle here shift D pull it up P to break it out and we'll get going on this guy here scale it down and it'll go in in fact I'll, I may have to change this uh, in a bit so we'll see all right I'm push push it in E to extrude I'm gonna come up to here let's go to wireframe and zoom in let's go E come up scale it in a bit and let's see the way I'm gonna do these is I am going to do that and I'm gonna do the space so I'm gonna leave a big space for where I extrude and I'm going to create so I'm come to the edge of the extrusion and then I make this little flat flat little piece I'm gonna do them all just by eye whether they're the same size or not it's not gonna matter so I'm coming across the part I'm going to extrude to the flat zone and I'm just making that flat zone and then I'm coming up here and we'll deal with that one in a bit. Um, I'm going to put an edge loop there and here and in all of these areas here like that. I'm going to go back to edge selection. And then I'm going to <laughs> wireframe so I can see which one I'm going to select all these ones in the middle there. And then I'm going to control B and pull. And I just want to, and I'm not worried if this one's off right now. And I'm going to E and Alt S and I'm going to push out like this. And they're not going to be perfect. I just want them out like that. I might even go a little further out. Um, let me scale shift Z, I guess at this point. All right, good enough. And then I'm going to come in here. Let's make sure that my polys are facing the right way. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab the edges. And do all the edges up to there. And I'm going to bevel with three. Nice big bevel like that. I'm going to come up to the top. And let's go to wireframe and see. You're going to bevel in or scale in I'm going to do something with this though let's grab uh, let's grab all that and just pull it down okay yeah and then we're going to take this and we're going to right here and we're just going to bring it in and we'll bevel this edge here with three and we'll grab a circle from here shift D pull it up P to break it out whether we needed to break it out or not it doesn't really matter that much I'm gonna pull it down to here and again may have to change that opening a little bit extrude it up I'm just going to come in, extrude up to here, and I think I'll extrude again and then scale it in a little bit to do that. Extrude up to here, up to here, and scale it out a bit. And maybe we'll go, um, you know, like this, and then extrude one more time and scale that in. Like that. Let's go back into solid view. I have to make a face, and we don't really have to look at this part. We can just bevel this by eye, control B, make it a nice round in there. And then we'll take both of these and we'll bevel them just with three, like that. And then here we're gonna need edge loops. Here, let's let's shade smooth so we can see what we're doing. Okay, we'll need an edge loop here. We'll get a nice sharp point there. And we'll bevel here. In fact, let's isolate it. Yeah, okay, we'll just bevel that one. Control B. Three will come down here. Let's 
probably going to be just fine. And even the, the joining there is probably fine as well. Let's just sharpen this up though. It looks kind of, so it looks a bit nicer. It's not exactly the way it goes, but okay. So let's make sure everybody is recalculated there and there. Okay, let's make these ring like things here. Uh, let's grab a circle from here. Shift D, pull it down. I'll break it out. Yeah, that's it. Okay, got it. Um, don't really know what these are exactly. I mean, they look like washers. Let's uh, come up. And how about we? Um, how about we do this? E and S Z. And we scale it in a little bit. We do it that way. Let's look at that. And we maybe close this. How about that? We just make it solid. And then we bevel these. This one's kind of round, right? As much as we can, anyhow. We do something like that. Shade smooth. Uh, in fact, really, we probably are going to need to move these. Let's uh, let's uh, scale shift Z, pull them in. In fact, uh, I want to pull those in. Scale shift Z to do that. And I think that's going to be an okay shape for that. And then for this one, I don't know if it goes up and down and maybe fits into that one. It probably does, but uh, not really being all that mechanically. Uh, minded uh, we'll just do something very similar actually okay so I'm going to um, extrude down a little bit and then take both of these E and SZ will come up scale shift Z Maybe we'll just do it like that make it a bit more prominent and uh, we'll make a face there and we'll make a face there and we'll just bevel these but not too much with three though and maybe I'll slide an edge loop up there some stuff will never be seen but shade smooth I'm not gonna see that I don't think so I don't think it's really gonna matter although all right maybe I'll just inset that to fix that out How's that? Okay. So far. And the final things are the pieces of metal there. And what I thought I would do for that is I'm just going to come to the side and I'm going to take one of these edges there, just that piece there. Shift D, I'm going to pull it down. P to break it out. So I've got that. I'm going to look from the front and I'm going to, it's going to be a little bit off the diagram. I'm just going to attach it there. I'm going to edit and I'm gonna pull this down to about there and then I thought I would just come in like this and then come across like that so it's gonna be slightly different but that's okay and then I'm gonna take these two and control B, uh, shift control B and I'm gonna put just three edges in there or three vertices sorry look from the side and I'll pull it out to about here there's the center right there E to extrude come out about like that all 10 recalculate outside and then I'm going to pull it out to about the edge so it's not quite on the diagram you know you get it E and alt s and I'm going to pull I just don't want those vertices crossing over you know, especially right there but that's probably okay it's like that I'm just gonna do that so I'm going to recalculate outside I'll focus on that and we'll get rid of this top face here and then we will grab these edges here and we'll give them a nice bevel control B I'm gonna put five in like that and then I'll do the same down here three or five is, is fine shade smooth so it's gonna be like that okay and uh, 
maybe I'll make it a bit longer so I'll go into wireframe and I'll box select all of this and just pull it down to you know kind of right around there you get it and uh, this though we need to have another edge loop here don't we yeah okay and I don't know where my 3d cursor is right now so I'll just set, center it up like that take that and we will mirror that guy over to the other side and let's hide that now and just have a look at our work so that's everybody there and I think I can take it and just uh, control J Is it, did I get it all no need ah, I better apply that mirror and I'm going to join it and what about this guy okay join it so if I got everybody no not yet so there we go so there's no real modifiers on it um yeah you're looking a bit like a donut on you aren't you but I think you're okay actually yeah you're all right um so let's see how big is this yeah I told you it'd be around 12,000 so and so it is and um I don't like this though I guess I forgot an edge loop here so now is the time to go back and look at it and put in a few more edge loops to get some nice sharp edges and that will help with the texturing as well make it look a little bit cooler uh that's all basically okay all right so 12,000 okay so over to uv editing we're going to take the whole thing and we are going to try to do this all in one fell swoop we're going to try smart uv project on this with an island margin of 0 0.03 and okay and that's it and then you come up to pack but i'll, I'll use uh, pack master 3 it'll just give me a slightly nicer pack and we're going to try that and see how well uh, that works so we take it and export it as an fbx in substance painter it's time to open up that model as spark plug video there it is okay have a look at it make sure no parts of it look uh, invisible which would imply the polys are flipped and uh it was just one uv map not udims or anything uv tiles this time so bake the mesh maps i'll do that at 2k uncheck id and let it go all right there's the model and it's baked and now the thing to do is to look at it look for any discoloration or lines through it and i'm not seeing any so smart uv project so far did an okay job for us all right now time to put some textures on this i'm going to use a smart material i'm going to use the one that i often use which is this uh plant uh plant incubator white that I created but essentially I just created it from a plastic glossy so you could use anything that you like I just like this one it puts a little bit of grime in there and a little bit of shine as well might even be too much we'll see the next thing I'm going to do is look for in the materials I'm going to look for a metal and I'm going to scroll down here and use this steel rust that should come with substance painter I'm going to drop that on there and I'm going to add a black mask because I don't want it everywhere. Come to Polygon Fill, Properties Mesh, and I'm going to want it on this bolt here. I'm going to want it here on that thing, on these things, on that, and this and this, and up at the top and on that. All right, so that's what I'm getting so far. And that's exactly what I want all right so we've got those and those are my two materials uh, the next thing i'm going to do is create some text on this and so i'm just going to use height only i'm going to drop it down just a little bit so it's going to catch some dirt i'm going to come to my alphas and type in font and font jura i'll choose that one come to the properties for me i'm going to write nx-1 i have no idea what that is or why I'll choose bold and I'll put our orthographic snap to the front is the front yes and zoom in and I'm just gonna write nice and big so it's visible NX one all right and that's that and uh, back to perspective view and we'll get that to show up a bit better in just a moment ah, F. 
Okay, so now let's put some dirt on this spark plug. So this is whatever alpha text. There we go, good enough. Okay, so a fill layer and color and roughness only, roughness all the way up for dirt and a brownish color, dark color, whatever. And black mask, generator, generator dirt. And we get that. And I want it. I want it to look dirty. It's an old, sort of soiled spark plug. So we get that. Now we're not done yet. Uh, what we're going to do is I'll just label that as dirt. Let's get some of that dirt on the text. So let's add an anchor point on the text layer. And in the dirt generator, let's refer to it here. Micro details will turn on true. And micro height down here. Choose that anchor point. Change this from base color to height. And the dirt is in there. Now we can see that text. And it looks fine. We can try one more thing. We could maybe copy that or duplicate that layer and clear the mask. And instead of that, let's change this to a um, can't keep the keep the roughness like that. We could try it that way. Let's just make this a lighter color just for the moment so we can see it. And let's try a generator and let's try metal edges and see uh, if we're going to like this at all. Just bring the wear level down quite a bit. It'll sort of look like some metal is showing through at certain spots and uh, it might give a bit of a nice touch. It's it's not very noticeable uh, in, in this particular case and I don't want that up too high. Let's just do that. That's all I really want to do on this. Uh, you could try scratches if you want. If you want one final little bit of something. So we'll come in here. I'll leave, it, I'll leave it on color and, and height. And we'll leave the color as white so we can see. Just drag that down just a little bit so we can see it for the moment. We'll add a black mask. And in that mask, we'll add a fill. Open that up so we see the grayscale. Go to procedurals. Type in scratches. These come with Substance Painter. Add that so you can see them there. Maybe you know, lower that down. You can have a few of them there. Um, not very high resolution, so what we're going to do is we'll bump this up to 2K, and we will be just about done. Let's maximize by hitting Tab, all right? Um, yeah, maybe a little bit much uh, in the scratches here. Let's, let's click that, let's lower that, and lower the width. Just a touch of something here and there. You guys get a couple of them. Some of them may be a little pronounced. And in fact, you, we could change this to something like that. So they're barely noticeable. Just they're there. And then let's um, uh, add anti-aliasing. We'll change the color profile. And I'll put that there. And I'll change the um, HDR to this one to get a, a slightly different color. I know it's, it's not true exactly to my materials, but I, I like it. I don't really like this right there, that lip, but it's okay. Okay, and that is what we get. There's our old spark plug, modeled and textured. Cool, all right, thanks for watching. That's it, we'll see you next time.